Rhonda Bolton and Robin Ross describe how they narrowly escaped a fire at Angus Apartments in Prince Rupert in late December. Bolton was visiting her sister, Irma Bolton, who is an elder and needed a wheelchair for mobility. She said they heard the fire alarm, but it was only when someone banged on their door to get out of the building, they knew it was a real emergency. And we got her out through a blanket over her head because all the smoke we couldn't see in the hall. And we had to run by the actual fire because that's right in the front and we were a bit past her. So we had to run by the fire and then when we stepped on the top step, all the windows and everything blew out. The Prince Rupert Fire Department said the cause of the fire is still undetermined. But in November, a month before the fire, the BC Residential Tenancy Branch filed a penalty against building owners over compliance failures on safety repairs. Numerous complaints are listed in the penalty against owners Pierre Wong and Hu Feng Wong. Photos before the fire from inside the apartment show the walls covered with spray paint and a building in poor condition. In May, the City of Prince Rupert contacted the Residential Tenancy Branch with concerns. In a letter they stated, Currently, there is no front door in the property and several of the windows have plywood covering them, with them even being occupied by residents. Angus apartment owner Pierre Wong provided a statement to APTN National News stating there is a power imbalance with a residential tenancy branch. The tenants have all the power. The landlord has no power. I installed sprinkler systems, repaired doors, windows for them to be broken again by tenants and people allowed into the building. I have no way to recover the costs even when the tenant stops paying rent. Danielle Gentile, a Niskau woman who lives in Prince Rupert, wanted to do something to help displace fire victims as her family was displaced from Kitimat a few years ago. Along with community members, she decided to collect donations and the local hotel offered space. I started a fundraiser and um, many members of the community stepped up and just started donating money. We did a clothing drive um, and the Highliner was a very, very, very helpful as they provided us a room, a donation room. Emergency Services BC, Canadian Red Cross, and BC Ministry of Social Services all contributed fire victims to stay at a hotel. For nearly a month, Gentile has advocated for and tried to help find new rentals without success. She built a bond with fire victim and elder Irma Bolton, who she described as kind-hearted and strong-willed. She passed away last week. Irma and I um, grew very close and um, her health was diminishing um, before the fire happened. However, the stress of the fire and being displaced, I'm sure, had great effect and we lost Irma yesterday morning. The stay in the hotel ends this Friday and most residents have not found new rentals. Rhonda Bolton and Robin Russ say they see rentals but they are refused because they're on social assistance. I've been here three years trying to get places and we can't get a place because we don't have like a full-time job and we're just on social assistance or whatever. And it's like real hard to even hear anything. Like we contacted the city of Prince Rupert about the displaced residents. They did not respond to our emails. North Coast MLA Jennifer Rice's office did not provide a statement before airtime. Gentile is raising concerns over the lack of affordable housing in Prince Rupert. She thinks more needs to be done. More community involvement on all levels, from provincial, federal, community members to show up at council meetings. But we really need strong voices for, for this matter, as nothing will get done if no one says anything. Displaced residents are being directed to a BC government program that can provide funding to relocate to another city. Bolton and Russ plan to remain and stay with family and friends. Leah Wilson, AP10 National News, Prince Rupert.